Okay, check it out. So, this is another acquisition that I just recently made. I didn't need it, but the price was so good I couldn't refuse it. So, this is probably a 1970s era Clark 35 AWS, meaning all wheel steer. And it is, it's a forklift, essentially. So, all four wheels will steer, so when you turn that way, the front wheels go this way, the back wheels go that way. So it makes it so that you can turn around in a tighter turning radius. And then it currently has a, I don't know, eight or 10 foot tall mast for the forklift. Um, I don't know a lot about it. It doesn't, doesn't run. So the plan is to kind of try and evaluate and see what it'll take to get it going. Um, it's got four big old, uh, 14 by 24 tires that are all holding air. The other thing I see, so the forks come out to, I don't know, about here. So they're probably four foot. It's missing one of the two lift chains. And then there's this hose here is, and then there's this hose here is missing, I don't know, maybe it goes to this or went to that. I don't, I don't know exactly, but, so somebody started priming it at one point, but it's uh, basically Clark, Michigan. So I looked online, there is very little, if anything, about this machine on the internet, other than Michigan, which Clark, Michigan, are uh, two brands that were together at one point, may still be, I don't know, I don't think Michigan's really around anymore. But this is the smallest Michigan wheel loader that they made and this particular one was either one retrofitted to be a forklift which i don't think so or it was a all-wheel steer clark michigan forklift and so 35 aws the serial is 457a-184-cac um 184 and that's about the extent of it that I know, it is a diesel engine. I don't know what diesel it is. Apparently, from the the research online, it should be a, a Detroit diesel in it, but I I don't know. So I believe so this is an air compressor. It does have air brakes and air horn. Um, I don't know how well any of it works at all, but yeah, so it's a four cylinder diesel. Let's see here. Where does the air come in? Oh, this is the air cleaner. Okay, air comes in right there. And the Detroits that I've seen, they have a blower, at least if they're a two cylinder. Um, or a two cycle uh, Detroit diesel. Looks like some of the starting wiring is kind of either disassembled. One of the starter bolts is well, it's still loose. So maybe there's an issue in there. Well, and then there's a starter sitting right here. That's not a great sign for the starter. But here's the operator's location. My guess is that these are probably brakes. That's probably throttle. That's probably a parking brake. And this would be your forward neutral reverse. And then probably your high and high medium low, maybe high neutral low. Well, the steering feels at least loose. Let's see, these are gonna be the shift or the uh, fork operation so probably up and down and then tilt forward and back it does not have side shift um, but it's either missing a key or they have bypassed it with this switch it's got water temp oil pressure and then another temp gauge I'm not sure what that one is and some dummy lights 
I don't know what this one does. I'm gonna bet this one probably disconnects the rear wheel steer so that you only front wheel steer. So if you're on the road, it's easier to drive. That's my guess, I don't know for sure. But yeah, so this would be our fuel injection pump right here for the diesel. Um, and air compressor, water separators for the filters. This is probably a hydraulic filter right there. It does have a, oh, there's an hour meter. That hour meter right here says 5,026 hours and five tenths. So that's, it's okay. But yeah, I don't know what motor this is. Um, I mean, not that it matters at the end of the day, other than needing to find parts and stuff, but uh, a cool old unit, you know? I mean, it's pretty good size. And so the big draw to, for me to a machine like this is I am constantly going to places like this and moving machines, getting them out of the woods, you name it. And a forklift that can go off-road and not get stuck is a tool that I would love to have. And so when I saw this one pop up, I just, I couldn't refuse it. So the plan is to do what we can to get it running. And honestly, past that, I don't know. So we're just gonna kind of dive right in. There is a second machine here that I also bought um, and we'll, we'll get into that one later. But for now, here's the Clark all-wheel steer, four, it's also four-wheel drive, I forgot to mention that. So not only is it all-wheel steer, but it's four-wheel drive. So, you know, this, not only is it gonna be hard to get stuck, it's gonna be a beast, you know, with those 24-inch tires. So, yeah, cool. It's definitely uh, seen better days, but so is about everything else that I own, so. That's my draw to it, I love old old machines love bringing them back resurrecting them so yeah let's get right into it climbed under here and it looks like i found out we have a perkins diesel in this i don't know what motor or what diesel but underneath a bunch of grime and stuff that i scraped off i found this perkins badge on the valve cover so that's cool we'll do some more hunting on the motor see if we can find some numbers Maybe a block number or something somewhere that'll give us a little information on what engine this is so I can look up for parts. Now, from what I know, Perkins diesel in this machine was not an option when this machine was new, at least the Michigan loaders. There was only a Detroit diesel, so I don't know. Not sure if it was a repower or if it was something that Clark did for their forklifts for however many years or whatever, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's what's in it, so we'll deal with getting it running with that. At least we hope. We'll find out, I guess. Let's see what we got for oil. Well, it's got oil. Looks like we are slightly over full. Smells a little bit like fuel. Actually, it's mostly just engine oil. It might just be over full or there's water that's gotten down into it, and that might be the case. It's got a Clark transmission, model C27290. So, I believe it's a, a shuttle sh shift transmission. That's probably the battery box up there under the seat. No battery in it. Let's see, here's the bottom up. Well, we got coolant, as you can see dripping out of there. So, and it's green, so I don't see any oil in it. That's a great sign. But this starter situation with the wires loose and this bolt, that has me wondering. I'm, I think I might pull that starter out and see what the um, flywheel in there looks like and maybe try and bar that over. But definitely a beast of a machine. I mean, all of the accessories, lights and stuff are all broken you know there's this is probably the worst of the rot I mean, these are so well built so heavy built
All right, now look at that. You can walk around it without worrying about getting covered in burrs or laying in the weeds. I know a lot of people wouldn't spend the time to do that, especially in a situation like this, but for me, it just makes it so that my work area is easier to work in and I feel more comfortable and you know, I can just focus on the project at hand and not worry about, first off, these. These things, they're like stickle burrs or something. They don't hurt, but they get everywhere. And there were two or three massive, like there's a whole row of them right here. Um, and right there and there, all that dead brown is these stickle burr things. I don't know what they're called exactly, but they were all right here. And I was getting them all over my pants and you know, they get caught up in your shirt and then if you don't get them off, the laundry's not good. And so all cleaned up can get all the way around it. So this is a steel string trimmer that I put a hedge trimmer head on. And what it allows me to do is get down through thicker stuff and lop it off at the ground level. A string trimmer would do well as well, but you'd constantly be changing the string. And so I, I used to run for about 10 years a landscape design and construction business, and we used to mow about 105 plus lawns a week. And so on top of that, we did landscape design and construction, but when we did overgrowths, this was the best tool. You can go into thicker stuff, drop it down ground level, real quick and not worry about having a big machine or bringing in a, a brush cutter or something. So it is a little more work than a brush cutter, but man, is it easier and cheaper to run. So I love it. I use it for exact situations like this all the time. All right, on this thing, because I see some of these wires near the starter kind of just all over the place, I think the plan is I'm gonna start by pulling the starter off and taking a look to see if there's any issues in the flywheel housing or maybe with the starter. So that's what I'm gonna start with, um, just so I have an idea of what's going on. Looks like we got some sort of a spacer ring on the starter. The gears on the starter don't look too bad. Well, it doesn't look too bad in there, I mean, it's like there's definitely some like grass and stuff from maybe a mouse nest at one point. Let's get a bar on it and see what it looks like uh, barring it over, see if it'll move. And we're getting some movement. tight. There's a oh there is oh there's an access hole right here that's uncovered. Uh, there's definitely probably a mouse nest in there then. All right, it's binding again. Let's make a mark. about there is where it's binding. Yeah, there's definitely something going on there. Yeah, and this is what I thought. I thought definitely the starter was loose because I'm not the first person to have tried this. All 
right, I'm removing the valve cover so I can get access to the top of the motor. Maybe I can see what might be happening. And if not, I'm gonna pour some oil or something down the cylinders, let it soak. There's the Perkins badge. Doesn't look too bad. The inside of the valve cover. So surprisingly, the top of this motor looks really good. I think that chunk came from the valve cover coming off, that one too. But yeah. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign because there's definitely something going on where it's locking the engine up. All right, we're gonna pull this drain plug and see if we got any water in the engine or metal chunks. <clears throat> the engine oil level was a little bit high, so I'm thinking there's probably water, but pretty clean. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I don't even see any water in it. No. Honestly, I'm going to leave it alone for now. Yeah, didn't look like there was any... I didn't see any coming, chunks. Chunks coming out of the front of it. It'd push it right out. And the water, there was no water. I and I have not cranked this engine, so... It smells a little bit like fuel, so there might be some fuel in it, but... Alright, so I did not drain all the oil out. I just wanted to see if there was water in the bottom and any metallic substance or or chunks in it. I didn't see any of that, so I don't want to waste the oil at this moment. I will change it, but for now, I've got some oil I put here in this Gatorade bottle that I'm just going to kind of pour over the top end of this so we can get some oil up here over the top end. And I'm going to fill it back up on the dipstick so that it's at the proper mark. And then we're gonna try and get this freed up. Try and figure out what's causing the bind. All right, that'll be good for now. I do think I'm gonna grab some PB blaster and pour it in there as well. All right, got some PB blaster in here. I'm gonna pour it. I am kind of leaning toward this front cylinder might be have a valve stuck. That one's loose. Loose. Loose, loose, loose. Maybe. All right, I've got the ports. I've got a light up there on one of the ports. And I've got this inspection cover on the torque converter open and if you look in there I mean it it looks beautiful I don't see any issues at all I can turn this drive shaft you know it's making some noise just the the fluid but in large part there's no binding happening in there I only think man it might be a bent rod or a broken rod in the bottom of the block which would explain the I don't know half to three quarter turn then stop half to three quarter turn then stop obviously that would be worst case I'm still gonna keep investigating and trying to figure out what's going on here so that if all else fails I, I, if I have to rip off the bottom pan and figure out if there's something going on down there I will but I want to try and avoid that if I can so we will see I did accidentally break this bolt I was prying too hard on it trying to bar the flywheel over so instead I got a socket that I'm putting on the the crankshaft nut so yeah fun all right well I thought I had no nothing to lose so I put this ratchet back on the crank bolt and I had this big square bar and 
and I thought, nah, no way, it won't happen. And lo and behold, it freed up. Sometimes you just need a little leverage. But what I was prepared to do was really take it gentle when it started to bind, and I did. I didn't put much pressure. I mean, I just put all my pressure at the end of the bar, and it pushed right past it. And now, it's cranking all the way around. The fan's not turning because it's slipping on the belt because it's hitting the ratchet back there, but. There went our blue mark. So we just passed the blue. Now we'll watch it and wait for it to come back. There it is. So now we've been around probably at least twice now, so maybe three times. And it's not binding on anything anymore. Yes! All right, next up, we're gonna put the starter back in. I actually broke this bolt off and this stud kept coming out and it wouldn't go in far enough to be able to tighten down. So what I'm gonna do is I basically found a bolt that's gonna be long enough to get through the flange. I'm gonna just gonna bolt it here and put a nut on the bottom stud. And then when I get it back to the shop, I will remove that bolt and replace all three studs. So it's, you know, better mounted than it is currently. Right now, because we got it moving, you know, rotating over and it's not binding anymore, the goal is to get it started. I wanna see if we can get it run, see the, see how good the engine is, and then we'll go from there on getting it moved. I know this is the positive battery terminal. I know that's going here. Bunch of sensors unhooked. That's some sort of sensor. That right there is a sensor of some kind. And another one off the back of it, right here. Alright, so this thick red wire goes over to the other side. Comes into this loom here. And that red wire comes down this loom. Looks like it jumps into this one. Right up in there. Into this thing. Goes up under the dash. All right, got my RC car race trigger hooked to the starter that beat it. I'm gonna put a, this on the crank real quick. I'd say it needs a new starter. Yep, that's gonna definitely be on the list. Can't go anywhere without that. All right, so the other machine that I have purchased on this property also has a Perkins diesel, which is awesome because pulled the starter off it. It's in a lot better shape. 
and we're gonna give it a go. Here's the old one. It's still hot. I wanna see if the if I need the little adapter plate there. Yeah. So I don't think so. This one is shorter. I'm gonna try it without it and then we'll see what happens. I ended up um, cleaning up this last stud. I did get the nut off of it, and so we're gonna use these two studs instead of that top bolt. I couldn't get the bolt through the flange on this starter because there wasn't room for this to sneak past it. So instead of, do grind, instead of grinding on the starter or the bolt, we'll just use a stud. And this one, the solenoid is gonna be facing down. Which is okay. Oh boy. Alright. I gotta file some of that burrs off that stud there. Come on, baby. Oh, it's hitting. down there too. I just don't know if that thing's gonna have the reach that it needs. All right, long story short of it is, with this adapter, there is not enough throw for this to reach the flywheel inside the case here. So you remove the adapter, right? Okay, that's fine. But this stud is too long and comes in contact with the case of the starter right there and same on the other side simple solution cut the bolt down that's easy that would be fine the only problem with that is when i get a new starter it might need the longer stud because it also might need the spacer here so the dilemma is do i ruin these studs or do i wait and get a new one now the sun is starting to go down today and I'm thinking I'm gonna wait and get a new one um, so I don't mess these up. I will take this one with me as well because if I find one that's similar to this, this one actually has numbers on it. As you can see. Yeah, screw that, we'll get new studs. We're gonna need some washers or something. Well, now I've done it. I just totally blanked on the uh, thought that the threads don't go down far enough. So I'll have to either one, bring a, a die to run over it, or two, just get new studs or bolts that'll snake in there somehow. Oh, dang. I was trying to get it. All I wanted to do is try and turn this motor over and see how good she sounds. Hey, guess it's not happening today. Dang it. At least we know the motor ain't garbage here. Definitely worth keeping going. I think it's gonna fire off and be awesome. of car in the forks. All right, just got the starter rebuilt. We're going to put it in and see if we can get this old dog to bark back to life. I am going to replace all three studs when I get them back to the shop. For now, we're going to use what we've got. And hopefully <laughs> they're long enough. Because I did cut a little off thinking I was going to try the other starter, but Oh well. Perfect. They are long enough to get this beast on the road. Man, 
and looking in this tank, there's actually very clean diesel. It smells good still, so somebody definitely recently tried to get this thing going. I'm going to add some diesel to it. I don't know where we are on the tank. It's looking like we're toward the bottom, so I don't want to run out once we get primed. So I'm going to do that now. Again, that's why you buy vented cans, so that you can fill that up so much faster than the ones with no vents. Here we go. Well, it's not gonna happen tonight. I am, it's getting a little bit late, the sun's going down, and I needed to get some batteries that are charged, and I'll come back. I've got fuel to this injector, kind of this injector, this injector has fuel, and this one does not. And so this one and the this one, the second and fourth, are not getting fuel up here. I get it right down here at the rail, and so I got fuel at all four of these junctions. And so I've been cranking on it, just trying to get it to build pressure and bleed the air off. But so far, I can't even get it to pop off with the ether, which kind of blows my mind. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe up in there it's clogged and it's not even getting the ether. So maybe I'll pop that air cleaner compartment off or Maybe take that, take that hose up there off and see if something's going on in that realm. But at least we know the motor cranks. The starter does work, it's been rebuilt. It was kind of smoking, but it looks a little small for this application. It's a 10 MT Delco Remy. I mean, it looks like you could get double the starter. Man, that is hot. You could get double the starter in here. So, I don't know. Today is finished and I'm out of here. All right, so I just took this, I don't know if it's a filter or a water separator, but it did have diesel in it up to the top. But if you look inside, there's just a mountain of rust and crud built up in there. I don't think it should look like that. <laughs> so that's not a great sign. So I'm gonna clean that out. I'm betting there's supposed to be a filter element in here that's not. There is two other uh, fuel filters on the other side of the engine, but I don't know. We'll clean this out and we'll go from there. <laughs> that is nasty. Man, look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. What in the world? I ain't never seen nothing like this. It's like sludge. Look at that. Wow. That is... That is its own version of incredible.
I'm gonna use a bottle jack and see if I can get it up a little ways with that. You get the point. Bringing it up so we can load it on trailer. Try to see if see they they shouldn't be too hard to move. over quite a ways. Okay, I'm gonna get this back in here again. Uh, this will turn. Huh? The wheel will sure. turn. Does oh. it look like the tires are? I it might. Know. When you get you get going in that room moment, in movement. Yeah, you might. Josh, there's a lever right in front of your, at your, between your feet, on the, on the dash. On the dash. It's okay. a little, so that lever, one way, one way locks it in so it only does two wheel steer. So it must be down for that. I don't know, so I haven't seen that yet. Hold up. There we go. Go! 
go left, but you're dead straight. Just winch me in. Can't hear you. We said you. We said just you're, winch it in. We'll be good. He said you're dead straight. Just winch it in. Cause I can turn this right in. What? I can turn it right in. Just if you're dead straight on the trailer. Okay. So I'll just have to correct for a moment here. All right. But I should have enough run up. To Instead of trying to make little corrections with a, you know, yeah, 400 feet. It wants it. It doesn't want it anymore. We need more juice. Nope, we need to wait. It's smoking. Now I know why I got the winch so damn cheap. If I had control of that, I would uh, speed it up for you. I got it, I got it. <laughs> Man makes YouTube videos. Yeah. Forgets to turn camera on. But we're having fun. All right, here we go. It should go faster now. Are you center? Turn this way. Huh? Left? Towards this way. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Because you're going to go off on that side if you don't. Good. I want to make it more difficult. Come on, manhandle it, man! <laughs> no matter how much I spin, it's still going pop, 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 pop. Right there. Ezreal, are you dead? Yeah. yeah you're, you're, uh, you got some tongue weight. Look, I'm going to dismount safely per fork truck operating standards. There aren't Three enough safety contact. places to put your hands and feet to get off that thing safely. There we go. Look, three oh, points of contact at all times. See? Safe at Salvage Workshop. All right, we got it home, heck yeah. Obviously a little disappointing that we weren't able to get it to start, but at least it's here and I don't have to keep making the trip out there. Uh, it was a late night last night. I got home, it was dark when I got back with this. Then I had to go back with another trailer to get the green truck because the radiator blew. All right, so just got back from the junkyard. 
This is the original radiator in the green truck. And you can see right here, there's a crack that goes all the way down in the actual plastic chunk part of it. So, and then there's some stress cracks down here. All in all, it just was ready to go. Um, and clearly, my truck had the wimpy version of radiator compared to what was available. At the junkyard, I found this radiator that will fit it. It's almost identical in all of the hoses and everything goes on. It's just wider and I don't even think it's taller. I think it's just wider. But the truck already has holes, wider holes for the bottom to go in. It has wider holes for the two bolts to go in and the radiator hoses will fit just fine. So I figured why not go to a bigger radiator even though it's an old truck. It's not gonna hurt anything. So yeah, we'll get that smashed in there and then just keep going with stuff. You know, stuff like this, radiator blows, it's not a big deal to me. Stuff happens, you just move on. I wouldn't spend the kind of money you'd have to spend to buy a new one of these, and hence I went to a junkyard and bought a used one. And it comes with its risks, sure, but you know, the, the benefits outweigh the potential risk of it being a bad radiator. So I'm gonna put that in and should be good to go. And I've got that fixed. But now it's time to unload the forklift. I'm gonna try one more time to get it started. I really do think it's something simple that I haven't figured out yet because, I mean, the motor looks too good. Everything that I've seen in it says it's in great shape. I'm missing something. So we're gonna put a battery on it and try and get it to fire because unloading it under power, meaning unloading it with it running, is it gonna be a heck of a lot easier than without? Now I can get it off, but it's a matter of where do I put it when it doesn't operate. If it runs and drives and moves, then I can drop it wherever and just shuffle it around as I need. So, you know, trailer worked great. The truck definitely is not built for this. It's definitely, you know, a little bit underpowered to be pulling this. This machine's about 15,000 pounds trailers what five five or six thousand pounds you know so it's a good load on this two-ton truck but it definitely got it done we just took our time and went slow and got home safely so without wasting any more time let's just get a battery on this thing and try and figure out what's going on see if we can get it to pop off all right we've got fully charged battery i put the jumper pack on 12 volts so the jump and carry just an additional power starter here that we had rebuilt. I've got my little RC race trigger hooked up to it. And I'm just gonna crank it over and see if it still spins fine, which it should. See, it cranks great. That fan. You know what I just noticed? I wonder if that fan is turning the wrong way. It is! It's going counterclockwise. No way. It, could it be as simple as that? Is the starter turning the engine over the wrong way? Or is there a power? Do we need to switch the ground in the... Let's see, this wire goes up there to that terminal. And that is the positive, so this is our positive. Positive comes down through here. Yep, that's the positive lug on the starter solenoid. And then the ground, the ground goes from the battery, this wire here, and literally bolts to the transmission there. So that's a good solid, that ground. And then the only wire I have hooked to the starter right now is this battery wire and the, the RC race trigger, which is just basically giving us a start switch. 
all of these wires to this solenoid to the alternator everything is disconnected because i don't care about any of that right now all i care about is trying to get the motor to fire so you know it's funny because when i very first turned it over so before i had the starter rebuilt it worked for like four or five turns and then it died that fan was coming towards me and i thought to myself that doesn't seem right but i had so little time with that starter to even troubleshoot that or even think about it that i forgot I lost track of that and so when I had the starter rebuild I just assumed everything was was good and there's my first problem that's one thing I know about old machines that you really should think about is when you walk up to a machine never assume that the mechanic before you had any idea what they were doing or never assume that all the parts on the machine are correct because that's not even always the case when I walked up to this machine as you saw there was one starter sitting there that was not the right starter, but it was sitting there. And then this starter looked in much worse care, was partially bolted on. I think some of the wires were on it and some of them weren't. And so that led me to believe they were having starter issues from the beginning. Not to mention the engine was slightly locked. So now that we know that, I'm kind of wondering, I know they put these Perkins diesels in Marine, engine or marine applications like boats and things and so i'm wondering if either one this machine was repowered with this perkins came out of a boat i can't find anything on the internet about any of these 35 AWSs. either the, i can't find anything at all about the forklift version at all so if you can you know anything or you've got paperwork on it or a manual or anything i cannot find it only thing i can find is a michigan 35 aws shovel so instead of having a forklift up here, you have a wheel loader. So there's a, an arm and a cylinder that comes right up out of here and then a bucket on the front. Everything else seems the same other than I also have the manual for the, or the operator's manual for the, the wheel loader and it doesn't seem to have an air compressor or air brakes or air brake assist that I can find, it could. So, and also, as far as the motor goes, it should have either a Detroit diesel, a GM diesel, or a Waukesha gas, or a Continental flathead gas. And so this Perkins being in this threw me for a loop because I couldn't find anything on it. I, I literally had to figure out what motor this is on, or this is based on numbers on it, and the valve cover up top says Perkins like you saw. So getting back to the issue of what we figured out here i think either this came out of a marine application or they bought this starter used or had it and it came out of a marine application where it turned the the uh motor backwards and i could be wrong it could be just this this also could be wired wrong i don't know so one good thing and what we're going to do right now is now that i've got this now that I think we're turning the diesel wrong, turning it over the wrong way, I'm going to take the starter off of the other Perkins that I have and finish trying to put it on. I was going to try and put it on before, but it was 90 bucks and next day to get this thing rebuilt. And I was like, yeah, whatever, it'll be fine. I'll get that tomorrow. So I did that. And so now we're going to go back to that idea and see if that starter We'll turn this the right way and if it does turn this the right way then we know that's this here this starter is either wired wrong inside or is just straight it straight plane out the wrong starter so let's let's go grab that starter and uh give it a shot how crazy would it be it's just getting the other starter to turn the engine the right way will be all that this thing needs to pop off and fire I am really excited right now because I seriously think this is the issue. I think this is the whole problem. The motor looks in too good a shape to not have any compression because that's the only other issue that could be. The only other thing I can think of that would cause this engine not to even fire on ether is no compression at all. Or some sort of the valves are completely out of time. 
which would be mean somebody was in there and completely whatever destroyed timing or never got reset. I, I don't know, but let's compare this starter with the other one. All right, this is the one that was rebuilt off the actual forklift here, and this is low one off the other Perkins. It looks to me, I mean, the, the, the actual gears on this one are longer than on this one, but they both have this three bolt hole pattern. All right, so the only way we're gonna get this, see how there's some space there, there's not enough threads. We're gonna have to put some washers in there and I'm probably gonna have to thread the bolts on way out here and work, work the starter in. Um, I intend on replacing all the studs because I broke this one trying to get the flywheel to turn over, the motor to turn over, and only the top and bottom ones are being used right now. But that'll be fine for us to figure it out. I looked for like, they've got a bigger hole, but they're thicker and smaller washers than normal. So, let's see here. be enough or maybe one more all right now I got to go down and do the same thing on the bottom Let's hook back up our, uh, our race trigger. See if she goes, or at least turns over the right way. All right, here we go. We want the fan to turn that way, not towards us. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's turning that way. Yeah, buddy. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Okay, that is probably the reason that this old beast is not running. All right, I'll show you on this side because this is the side we found it on. So it's coming towards us. So the other thing, the other thing that I noticed when I, when the fan was turned the wrong way is I felt this and it was sucking air in the exhaust. This is the exhaust and this is the air filter assembly. So air should be coming in up there under that thing in through the filters and back down into the engine. And then the exhaust comes out this pipe. So it was probably pushing air out the air intake and sucking air in the exhaust pipe, which obviously is wrong. That little connection is going to need uh, some TLC. That's all right. Okay, now we're going to get a little huff of uh, laughing gas, and we're going to see if this will uh, pop off. If it fires. Oh, baby. Oh, baby.
think they're running on all of them. Well, we are running on all four. The air compressor itself, I feel like there's a noise in it. Looks like this. Hydraulic filter assembly is leaking.
All right, when I walked up to that Clark fork left, this was the starter that was on it. And come to find out, it is a counterclockwise rotation starter. Probably meant for a marine engine, or I was told a bunch of uh, older heister forklifts had counter rotation um, starters. Clearly not the right one. Put the one off of the other tractor on it, boom, fired right up. Sitting on the tractor was this starter. Well, this one, bolt holes don't line up. Well, looking around in the weeds, I found this one and it didn't look like this. The armature was broken. The, the Bendix was completely seized up. There was a complete back of the solenoid was busted. So I took it into the local starter repair company and in a matter of a few days, brand new armature, brand new Bendix, brand new solenoid, fixed the wiring on the inside, got the whole thing rebuilt. This is a Delco Remy, I think it's a 30 MT. This one is a 10 MT. And so, I mean, you can just see the size difference. I mean, it's massive compared to this one. Clearly, this was not the original one, but this one was. When I put this ring on here originally, you can see the outline here of where the old one was. And this ring matched this starter perfectly. So plan is we're gonna get this one thrown on. Currently don't have a starter on there right now. They were shooting in the dark with starters. I mean, that's why this one was wrong. This one was, it fit, but was also wrong. And there was no way I could have known that this was gonna be a counterclockwise rotation. I guess I could have put power to it, but then I would have had to know to think to look for that, but I honestly didn't. I had no clue. So obviously the guy who rebuilt it, definitely not his fault in, in the starter, it was mine. I mean, at the end of the day, I took him a starter, he rebuilt it. This thing's rebuilt and ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna hang on to it for maybe a future project, you never know. This bad boy is the one that's going on the machine. So let's get it bolted up and uh, see if it'll fire the machine right up. All right, now we're gonna try and drill right in the middle of this bolt to extract it. Try that. Now, I like to take a Torx bit that's just bigger than the hole I just drilled. And then I just t -t -t tap it in. You can hear that high pitched, gets tighter, 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 higher, higher, higher in tone. Higher the pitch, the further you are in. And now you take a quarter inch open-ended wrench or closed-ended wrench. And so let's see. Righty tighty lefty loosey. So we want to go that way. We want to go That would be worst case scenario in doing what I just did. You break the tip of the bit off in the hole that you just drilled. And the reason that's a bigger deal is that is now a hardened piece of metal inside of that soft stud. All right, well, let's see what we can do. I doubt I'll be able to drill through this, but let's try it. Nope. All right, so the hole kind of goes through. Um, I'm gonna try and just bash this broken piece right off into the middle. I think it's going. That one fits better. Well, 
I got it in there a little further. I think I might try and uh, do something again with this hole that I have and then might be able to get it out. We'll see. Red Loctite. Then I've got a nut run down to the middle section where it basically stops it. We will run this in until it can't go on anymore. There we go. Now this nut should come off. Perfect. We'll do that two more times and put the starter on. All right, well, we got the starter fully installed. Got the little race RC race trigger hooked up so we can try and start it. One thing to note, the alternator's not hooked up. All this additional wiring for, you know, running the switches and the gauges and all that, I haven't I haven't done anything with it. So I really need to go through and completely rewire it because as you see right here next to the battery cable, there's a open wire, there's a bare wire. This wire has a million cuts in it. Same with every single wire. I mean, there's wires that are cut there. This wire here, it's got a, you know, missing the coating there. Uh, coming off the, the uh, alternator there. I mean, this wire has been melted before. There's a crack there. So, to properly start this up there with a button is something that I definitely want to do. So yeah, right now I don't care about the additional wiring. It's all disconnected, has no power going to it. Only thing that's got power going to it is this big cable going to this big starter. So let's see if we can start it up with this starter. If it still has a prime and I'm betting it's gonna smoke like a chimney. Guess we'll find out. Here goes nothing. Yeah, baby. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> I haven't started it in probably going on maybe a week and a half, two weeks. And so it's just been sitting right here. And she's smoking. Awesome. Well, well, as I said, none of these buttons or gauges work. The air horn still works. But, so that's awesome. I am definitely leaning toward this engine needing an overhaul. I prefer to do an in-frame if I can, because it'd be easier to take off this whole thing here, get the air cleaner off, the exhaust off, and really, it should be pretty easy to access everything. So, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. I'm gonna do a little bit more work to this thing before we get that far. Figure out if we can get good brakes, etc. Definitely wanna redo all the redneck wiring that has been scabbed into this thing over the years. But for now, we know for a fact, two things actually, that that starter fires this baby right up and that battery in there is holding the charge beautifully so because I don't have a jumper pack on it I left the battery that I had stuck in there before in there so that is awesome to see this machine still needs quite a bit of work but at least we got a starter that turns the engine over the right way <laughs> okay ladies and gentlemen we got it back to the shop and dang man we got it running and so I am totally pumped that it's running. I definitely don't know a lot about this machine. Um, doing the research, that all I can find is this is a Clark, Michigan 35AWS wheel loader. It's their smallest version, all wheel steer, four wheel drive that has a forklift mast on it. And it's not some fabric cobbled thing somebody made at their house it literally is a professional job in regards to the way it attaches 
right here where there's this this line here there uh, that is where the hydraulic cylinder for the lift would be for the actual bucket and you can see right here that's the pin hole and it goes through to the other side where the cylinder would be attached up at an angle like this and up there you can see the slots in the gas tank in the fuel tank where the cylinder would be so I don't know if this was a custom job I really think it is I think Clark probably sold this to the military they probably had a custom order from the military wanting a specific you know the ability to go off-road with you know high ground clearance with four-wheel drive all-wheel steer and the ability to move materials pallets you know you name it wherever the heck they were so because i did find one post online about somebody saying that they ran one of these 35 aws's in the military with forks on it and they were saying how essentially it was extremely rough ride you know there's essentially no suspension other than the, the rubber tires um, the rear axle does pivot so you know there's that for being able to go on uneven ground but but other than that there's no manuals for it there's no specs on it other than what's on the two plates which this is a clark stamped third 35 to aws 147 mfh and then it's got the serial number there 5,000 pound lift capacity and this badge should actually say Michigan uh, instead of Clark if it was a wheel loader and for whatever reason this particular Michigan Clark was manufactured in Ontario Canada so if you know anything more about this old machine as to what it's really what its story is where it was used if you have a manual or you know where I could get one, I would greatly appreciate it. Definitely has some things I got to fix on it. Number one being brakes. It does no brakes. Number two, it really sounds like there's something going on with the air compressor because this is, it is air over hydraulic brakes. And I don't quite know a lot about them. I mean, obviously I'll figure it out and figure out how to actually get brakes to at least some of the wheels if not all four but, but yeah it runs it moves it's very functional and as soon as i can get the forklift mass to operate properly and get it to stop and break it's going to be an awesome addition here at salvage workshop with the ability to move big stuff off-road not worry at all about where i'm going what the ground is even the heister forklift that i have you have to worry about you know dirt or whatever it can go on on uneven ground off the concrete but you have to stay on harder packed ground than you know normal but this thing man it can go anywhere 24 inch tires you know i mean definitely can float through about anything so i hope you enjoyed the recovery hope you enjoyed getting it running there will definitely be more on this machine to come so thanks as always for joining me here on the adventures at Salvage Workshop.